For my yoke is easy and my burden light. This final line from today's gospel stuck out to me like a sore thumb. Think about the line for a second. Don't just treat it as one of those platitudes we as Christians just take in a very matter-of-fact kind of way. Is Christ's yoke easy? Is his burden light? Said another way, it has been my mission ever since I became Catholic to try to bring others to the faith. I've spent literally thousands of hours using whatever argument I think might work to help people become Catholic. And not once have I used the argument that Christianity is easy. So what are we to make of this line? My yoke is easy, my burden light. Is Christ deluding us for some greater purpose? And if he's not lying or deluding us, in what way is this true? Because I think if I surveyed all of you without this intro and asked you, is Christianity easy, I wouldn't get a lot of yeses. So I thought about this for a long time this week. And I've decided that this is true in the same way that when you tell a drug addict that their life will be much easier if they get over their addiction. This is true in the same way. We're not telling that drug addict that the act of getting over it will be easy. We're not denying that even after they find some some, uh, path to success, that they won't have risks of relapse and failures. But we're saying that even despite all of those struggles and difficulties, their life will be better and easier once they get over their addiction. So in a different way, what Christ is telling us today is that we are addicted to sin, and it's ruining our lives. And he's telling us, though, even though it's difficult, even though it's a struggle, even though we will continue to fall back into sin, our lives will be better and there will be wonderful results if we can master sin in our lives. That the yoke of Christ is lighter than the yoke of addiction to sin. And by way of creating a metaphor, last weekend I hiked Mount San Jacinto in Southern California. I don't know how many of you have been there before, but it towers over the surrounding area. It might be one of the most, even though its peak is not as high as, say, Whitney or some others, in relation to the land around it, it just is way up there. Its elevation is nearly 11,000 feet, so pretty tall. But the flatlands below it in Palm Springs are less than 500 feet. So very different than, say, one of our taller mountains like Whitney, which is 14,000 feet. But the land around it is five to 7,000 feet. So it only stands up six, 7,000 feet, something like that where this stands a good 10,000 feet above the surrounding land. So this ended up being an extremely difficult hike for me. And it it took everything I had. And in every way I wasn't up to the hike, it was made clear to me. I was carrying the burdens of my dietary sins of my entire life. I could feel every bowl of ice cream I'd ever ate, every donut, every steak was going with me to the top of that mountain whether I wanted it or not. And I just barely made it. I was right at the edge of it. Andrew in the back can tell you. I don't think if it had been a couple hundred feet higher, I would have made it. 
But standing down at that, su- at, at, at that summit, finally having made it, exhausted, I looked down at Palm Springs and how far below it was. But then I looked at something about a little more than halfway up the mountain. The tram that had gotten me a fair amount of the way there. Because you don't actually start the hike at 500 feet. You start it around 8,000, and so you have to do the last 3,000 on your own, which is still plenty. But I did have an 8,000 foot or so head start from that beautiful, wonderful tram. Probably the best 30 bucks I ever spent, frankly. (laughs) And I think in a certain way, this is the perfect metaphor for following Christ. We are addicted to sin. And we carry those sins with us, and they cause us much pain and suffering. And they make our journeys much more difficult. And we often feel alone and overwhelmed by that struggle, even when we succeed. But I think sometimes during that struggle, we forget just how much Christ has blessed us, Christ has protected us, Christ has given us a boost like that tram did. I think we forget just how much we receive from our loving and forgiving God. 